So the cup down pipe already comes with uh, a bung at the top. So just take a 10 mil Allen and remove the cap and the uh, AM uh, white band will plug directly in here. Okay, so this connector here is the one that connects the ECU. So the female plug here on the right is the one that goes through the firewall here to the ECU. And this one goes over the transmission and back to the uh, rear O2 in the back. So that way it looks like this. You have this connector on this side that's plugged to the ECU. It's kind of an extension cord basically. And here on the other side, that's where your rear O2 sensor actually plugs. So one thing I recommend, if you are not gonna use your rear O2 at all anymore, just uh, remove the two clips that are on top of the transmission to remove this wire and we're going to send that inside to uh, probably here, to this uh, uh, grommet here and send that inside under the dash so that we can do all the connection inside. If you look here, there are, the wires have uh, several colors, that's a no 4 sti uh, white and black, yellow and red, blue, and uh, white. That's called the B19 connector. And if we look at uh, the schematics for this, so you have uh, the power coming here from the engine here, the ground, uh, the rear O2 B19, the uh, yellow and red, which is your number two, is actually going to be your power. Uh, number three, the white, is where we're going to send the signal to the ECU, and that's what the curb access port is going to record. And number four here is the ground. So Cobb uh, says don't use the power and ground from this connector to connect your O2. Use a separate ground and power so that you don't short anything to the ECU. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're only going to use pin number three, the white uh, cable to send the signal to the ECU and we'll power directly everything else under the dash. So here I did a small cut in the grommet. Uh, connected the, uh, the rear O2 harness. Now goes here behind the brake lines um, so that it's, it's going to stay out of the heat from the turbo and then goes here. And this is the, the harness that comes from the AEM gauge. I rooted it in the back here and it will come also here behind the brake line so that actually next to the connector for the front O2 sensor uh, which is this guy at the front O2 so here I'm gonna have my uh, wide band that will come and connect directly here so now that my connectors are in place I'm gonna put my shield back on and the next step is going to be to screw in the, uh, the white band and then we'll go inside for the wiring. So the white band already comes with a little bit of anti-seize on it, but um, you can put a little bit more if needed. Okay, so the great thing with the cup shield is that they already have a, a cut in the shield to uh, leave room to get the uh, O2 uh, sensor ratchet in there. So. Just uh, make sure it's tight, but uh, not over tighten. And here I have routed my wires, secure them with a zip tie so that they don't fall off. Um, here you have also the connector. So uh, this car doesn't have AC, this car doesn't have AC, so uh, uh, I have a little bit more room. You might have some of the uh, AC pipe in there. And otherwise here, that's the connector for the white band and going back here into the car. So. Next step is going to be uh, to go inside the car and see how we wire that inside the car. AEM didn't do a very good job of protecting the uh, rest of the harness to uh, the connector, so I recommend you put extra electrical tape on this. So this is another dash. So you can see over there in the back where the wires are coming from next to the harness. 
Then I have the uh, O2 sensor here. So it has a connector just like this. Let's say the clip is at the top. Um, so it's one, two, three, four. You have to connect to number three, which is the bottom left. If you look at the color of the wire in the back, it's a white one. The uh, yellow and red one should be at the top right, so that the opposite of the yellow and red. So here I put uh, uh, the wire here, which is a white one coming from the uh, EM. Um, so the white one is a signal. I cut the blue one and tape it at the one for a serial port. Uh, but we're not going to use it to, to make sure it doesn't short anywhere. I protect it with uh, um, a tape. And here, power red is uh, power and blue is, and black is uh, ground. So here, my power source that I tap basically to what was the radio uh, power. I added a 10 amp fuse in line to uh, to this and um, this part of the gauge. So I made a temporary hookup here to make sure the gauge works. And so if I turn this on, the gauge starts, initializes, and then when you start the car, it starts feeding. And now it's feeding. So here I have a cup access port. Initializing. So right now the uh, you can see the uh, readings here of the car versus the uh, white band. Um, I need to get another tune so that I can read uh, the signal from the rear O2 on the car. So I'm waiting for the new tube for the new tune from uh, Chirbotech tuning. As soon as I have that, I will be able here to display the data from uh, the white band. So here on the top right, I have the uh, rear O2, and which is a white band, and on the left, the stock O2, and uh, here the gauge from the EEM. And so if the skinning is done right, the uh, reading on the top right should be the same as on the gauge. We are pretty close. 